Let's huddle together for a while. Please, one. please. This is this is lovely. I very rarely get this close to talent. Oh god. <laughs> This is warm energy, I like it's it. Nice. It's, it's nice. nice. It's actually very nice. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about Tom. Like offered relief from, <laughs> the, from the icing cold of the evening. Tell me a little bit about Tom and why the character spoke to you when you read the script. Um, uh, let me ask you about this, this character, such a strong-willed girl at the centre of this big movie. I mean, what is it about her and this story that kind of compelled you to want to be involved? I just think, first of all, it's uh, amazing to see a female heroine that's written like Hester Shaw from Philip Reeve and then, you know, from the filmmakers translating her into the script. Uh, she's just so, like I say, multi-dimensional, juicy, and, and, and is allowed to be everything, the good and the bad things, and, and has a proper story arc, like very often male heroines do. So that, to me, really excited me as an actor, and also as an audience member, to just see someone like that on the big screen. And then she has this big scar, which is not a huge, doesn't happen very often in, in Hollywood. So I loved it, not having to be, you know, being allowed to be messy and, and whatever yeah, on set absolutely. it's freeing yeah. and let me ask you about working with these amazing people at Weta and, and Peter Jackson and Christian I mean what was it like being in their world because they're such visual storytellers who have yeah. such amazing uh, ways of bringing fantasy worlds to, to the screen it was amazing I mean I think but they're so kind of normal people even though they're so freaking talented and have this amazing group of people around them that are so talented so um, what I really appreciated was that, was that they felt they made us feel like we were just you know in a way, doing an indie film with a lot of money and a lot of toys to play with. So it felt very grounded and, uh, yeah, not too overwhelming. Fantastic story, a really human story that's yeah. quite prevalent for, for modern day. I mean, what was it about this story that spoke to you when you read the script for the first time? You know, to me, that the, the sense of um, the theme of freedom and, you know, um, the, the metaphors and the parallels of our current world to, to what the, the various themes that was discussed, um, not discussed, but like portrayed in the film was really interesting. I think the most amazing thing was that, you know, we had these powerful women who took charge and, and made decisions and went out there and, and, and changed things themselves. And to me, that was really powerful. And, uh, in terms of challenges as, a, as an actress, I mean, this is a big movie with a lot of CGI. I mean, how big is this challenge to bring these characters to life and this world to life when you can't kind of see what's going on? But I can imagine Peter kind of told you this is the vision and everything else. I mean, how difficult is it to act with not a lot? <laughs> well, you know, what's really interesting is that um, the filmmakers actually believe that the actors care more about the character than anybody else. So instead of dictating to us what they saw, they collaborated with us which was such a privilege to be able to collaborate with these incredible minds and um, you know and also there was of course Philip Reeve had um, a, a, a good the book told you so much it was such a great resource as well at the same time um, it was a it was a really fun experience yeah Tom you know he felt like something really different for me to do and you know the, the reality of it is man if Peter Jackson gives you a call and goes, I like your work, I'd really like you to do this thing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very little that, you, you know, that you'd have to say, no, Peter, I'm not going to do that for you, sorry. Um, because I'm such an enormous fan of his work. So that was, you know, that was a huge part of it, man, you know. And um, it was really fun finding Tom as well, because he's kind of this, he's kind of this sort of geeky, uh, very sort of textbook English guy who kind of, just keeps himself useful you know he tinkers away in his workshop messing around with toasters and turning them into DVD players and stuff and I just I just really like the idea of this guy who uh, who I think he involves himself so completely and implicitly in whatever he's doing and that's what's interesting about when he when he's ejected off of London because suddenly he has nothing to do he has no purpose and he has to deal with this huge sense of inadequacy that he that he doesn't have a purpose anymore and so he has to kind of find his way in the world and recontextualize himself you know thank you so much great answer thank you so much thank you so much pleasure oh what a gent lovely <laughs> Like we're all in a trench or I something. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Lisa. I don't think we've got much time to your rush out. You're a dab hand with these big movies after Avatar, I can imagine. But uh -huh. is it still a challenge to do these big kind of CGI uh, movies? 
Absolutely. I mean, any movie, big, little, whatever, is, is always presents a challenge because you can screw it up, right, if you don't do it right. But I think a film like this, certainly you feel the responsibility. There's, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, people working on it. There's, a, there's always a lot at stake. I don't, you know, I don't worry too much about that. You know, and I, I don't feel, oh my God, they're spending so much money on this. I just want to do my job the best I can. What was it about this character? I mean, you made some 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 various different characters over your career. I mean, yeah. what was it about this one and this this story that kind of spoke to you when you read the script? Well, he was so moving. I mean, there's something just so so uh, tragic and uh, uh, pathetic in a way about this character. I found. I mean, he's got tremendous strengths, but there's also this core of vulnerability that there there to the character and just the position that that his life has been has put him in is so moving to me he's a character who's who does not die he's been around forever and yet nothing nothing really means anything to him anymore at all until something does and that confuses him and obviously there's more avatar on the way i'm sure you you, you know everything but won't tell us anything but uh, um audiences are so so excited to see this world and these these movies that james has brought together i mean yeah. what was it like being back in that world again Oh, it's the best. You know, Pandora is a big place. In the first Avatar, we primarily spent time in the bioluminescent rainforests of Avatar. But the world is much, much bigger than that, in fact. And there are many, many places to go and many, many different creatures to meet. And uh, uh, it's got so many surprises, so many, you know, it's as large as Jim's imagination. This is an enormous, enormous movie. I mean, what was the experience like being on such a huge movie? It was crazy. You know, this is my first feature film, so I've, it, you know, to start off so strong is really quite extraordinary. Um, it, I, it's a huge scale production, so just the sheer amount of people involved was crazy. It was How long cool. was the process for you to get involved? Was it Peter Jackson who called you up or? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Pete called me personally. Um, no, no, I just got an email in my inbox and I liked the character and thought, yeah, I want to work with these guys and sent a video, like a, an audition off and then the next I knew they were asking if I was available and I obviously was. And um, yeah, that was basically it. How uh, how much did you know about the the kind of the material beforehand, or was this uh, entry level for you? Um, this is entry level for me. Um, so my agent luckily knew the books and was a big fan. And um, I read those quick smart and did the audition and then read scripts and things like that. So what's it like working with uh, Peter Jackson and all of the filmmakers, Philippa and Fran and everyone else? I mean, they've done so many amazing things know, in the, the and years I grew so far. I up on those films. I really did, and I watched all of the behind the scenes like religiously and so going on to set and just being there I like I knew the places that I'd seen like on the behind scenes stuff it was really cool really 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 cool and for uh, people that maybe don't know too much about the books and the material what can I expect when they watch the film do you think um, it's it's a post post apocalyptic society that's kind of like ours but completely different and um, there's love and there's like revenge it's it's wonderful is it a case now if peter calls you up you just you just have to say yes now after so well, many he years didn't of call me up for this no pete uh pete uh, i i didn't talk to pete until i got over there but um no it was lovely to to be working in his world again even though he wasn't the director, I saw him a little bit, and that was, uh, was he's a good man, and it was, uh, uh, you know, it's a very uh, complex world to realise. It's, it's a, it's a pretty extraordinary project to undertake, and there aren't many filmmakers in the world who could make that decision. Yes, we're going to make uh, a film from Mortal Engines. Uh, but you know, you know, if Peter decides this is what I want to do, that they'll, that team will 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 do a very good job. And tell me about what lured you to Valentine, because he's one of those villains that, even though he seems like he's a villain, he actually thinks that he's doing what's right, and Indeed, he's yeah. very complex well, in that I think way. that's right. He's got a very strong conviction that the world in which he lives is dying, and indeed it is. I mean, uh, it's on its last legs. Uh, so um, he just feels if they don't do anything, they're all going to die of starvation. You know, there's no there's no more food for anyone really in Europe, and uh, the whole system, the whole 
the whole setup, the whole structure of um, the municipal Darwinism has kind of passed its use by date. Uh, so he does have very strong reasons for doing what he does. He, he's fairly ruthless, but then he feels like you've got to push through. He's a revolutionary, really. Uh, he's someone who he's like he's like a Lenin or a, he's like a Lenin or a Trotsky. You think, well, I've got to I've got to push through and destroy this system in order to build another one, even if thousands of people die. I think it's necessary. So he he is a man of conviction, but he's also quite held, and there's there's, there's quite a lot, be, you know, that he that he doesn't divulge even to his daughter. So he's a father as well. He's a writer. He's an archaeologist. He's a he's quite a dashing, charismatic romantic figure when we first meet him so he's he encompasses a great deal of uh of contradictions which i like in a character thank you so much for your time pleasure. pleasure thank you cheers yeah, it's a huge huge movie i mean for a first movie you couldn't have gone any bigger i mean it's uh, the biggest challenge but also i guess you dropped in the deep end from the beginning yeah no i was i was, I was dropped on the deep end i'm used to, i'm used to being dropped on the deep end i see we dropped on the deep end all the time usually by peter um but look you know i, I was dropped in the deep end but i i kind of had you know a whole you know a lot of support i mean you know peter and fran and philippa were there you know you know as, as, as a wonderful safety net um and and but also really let me sort of have my freedom so so you know it's it's the, you know the this film is the two years effort of the collaboration of the four of us so you know if you as a filmmaker i mean what was it about this particular story that that spoke to you and you thought this is the one to kind of cut my teeth on if you like well i mean you know i always loved the books and my son was a huge fan of the books and so i sort of read them and and and, and you know peter got the rights because he he said look these would make great films and he was he was right um, but they, you know they've also you know they've got all the spectacle that you want to go to the cinema for, but they've also got a human heart, and hopefully they've also got something to say about us and where we've been, and hopefully where we're not headed. Yeah. I was supposed to one of your producers, and she said, you know, obviously there's four books, but it was important to focus on this one. I mean, was that important to you to just tell this story, and then if it spawned into others, great. If it doesn't, you've told the story and done it as much justice as you can. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, you know, you see the film. It's, it's, you know, it, you know, we, we do, we do end with, you know, showing that Tom and Hester, are, you know, are, are together. So you know, it, it is the beginning. It's the beginning of their story, and the books obviously go on and tell a lot more of their story and and go into a much larger world. So, yeah. But it was, it was important just to focus on this. It was, it was hard enough focusing on this, let alone worrying about the other stories. I mean, tell me about the experience of, of not just being in a movie like this, but working with Peter Jackson and all his amazing collaborators. Yeah, yeah, I mean, amazing. This, it's certainly the biggest thing I've been involved in. And uh, yeah, when you're working with people like this, it's uh, it kind of relaxes you a bit. I mean, you're nervous at the start, of course, to be involved in something this massive, but it relaxes you knowing you're in such safe hands. And particularly when you when you read the novel, when I first read the novel, the first thing I thought was that these are the only people that can make this movie. You know, it's written for them. So. Just knowing that you're just involved in the best studio for the best pro project is just uh, very exciting, very exciting. What was it about your character that spoke to you? Because he's kind of very integral to the to bits of the plot and everything else. Yeah. I mean, it yeah, must have been uh, quite a meaty role, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's good. It's a small role, but it's a supporting role, but it's uh, he is quite important. And um, I, I just love that he's, at the start of the film, when we first meet him, he's just fed up with everything and he's... He hates the way the whole city is being run, like 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 a few of the characters in the film, but not many are quite aware of how awful things are on London. <laughs> and Bevis wishes wishes he could do something about it, and he just doesn't know what to do. He knows his place, he knows he can't really do much about it. And then when he, by chance, meets Catherine Valentine, the daughter of the most powerful man in the city, uh, he finally gets an opportunity to do some of the things that he wishes he could do. So, so that's that's a, that's a great character to to have put in front of you. Yeah. There's a great ensemble in this as well. Obviously, people yeah. like Hugo Weaving and Stephen Lang, but yeah, all of these yeah. other guys who Amazing, are, some yeah. of them are making their debuts on yeah, film, all yeah, in this together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's not, not, yeah, there's a lot of people who've done a lot of good work before, but perhaps not on this scale. Uh, so, myself included. So we're all, we're all very excited to be a part of it, and it, it really creates a great ensemble um, on set. You know, we're all, everybody pulls together. Everybody's looking out for each other. We're, we're very close despite filming over months and people coming and going at times. Um, yeah, it's, uh, but the, the best thing about working down there is that it's such a family in the studio, you know, they've, they've made so many films together, so they just make a little, they just make a little space for you when you arrive and they welcome you in and then you just go on like you've been a part of that family the whole time from the 90s, so it's, uh, that part of it's very easy. How delighted were you to see all of the work that has gone in come to fruition when it was when you saw it on the screen? Eleven and a half years ago, when I flew to see Peter with the books, 
all I thought about was there's one person who is the ideal person to get behind this project and bring it to life, and it's Peter Jackson, who's the greatest world builder in cinema. And I've been waiting 11 and a half years, and I couldn't be more delighted to be here. <laughs> what was it about the books that, that kind of struck you when you read them for the first time, and you thought they'd make a great movie? The minute I read the books, I was struck by two things. One, how original the world was, this, municipal, this concept of municipal Darwinism. And the second was having such an ideal female flawed heroine who was ruthless and empowered and engaging and she was just so heroic in her own unique way. I had never read a female character like that. So yeah, was, was it important with this one? I can imagine obviously with this people obviously talk about franchises and everything else. Was it important to just focus on this one and get this one right and then think about that later? We're not thinking about anything beyond this movie right now. How was it undertaking this task because it's, it's quite a, a huge undertaking? It's uh, the biggest I've worked on, and uh, but also the biggest payoff. It's uh, we're very, very proud of the final result, and we just hope everyone else is as well. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty vast movie. I mean, there's so much going on in this movie. I mean, when Peter came with you, the idea that he was going to bring this to the screen, did he give you a kind of the concept of what he wanted to bring to the screen, or did he leave that kind of up to you guys? Oh no, we, we were given a lot of concept uh, work, a lot of uh, pre-visualization as well. So we had sort of you know a good idea on the, the the kind of things they were looking for, and then obviously we. We take that and we really flesh it out and then to sort of create the images that you know you'll see on the screen tonight. I think I think one of the reasons that we could even get this thing through is that the filmmakers had such a good idea of what they wanted. They had a pretty they had a pretty clear idea of a vision of where this one they wanted to go. So it makes it a lot easier when you have somebody directing you that has such a good idea. What's the biggest challenge doing a movie like this? I mean, I know obviously we have done Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and everything else. I mean, when you come to a movie like this, what is the biggest challenge that, that you kind of have to undertake to bring it to the screen? It's such a it's such a un, it's such an unbelievable um, concept, yeah. you know, a whole city on wheels. So keeping that keeping that believable without being cartoony, I think is is probably the hardest was the hardest thing. It, but but making sure that it looks big is a fine line between an scale and like. You know, silliness that it's finding that line. Yeah, it's making sure the audience stays engaged in the story and not fixated on, on how a big city like that could really move. <laughs> and obviously, working, I think this is Christian's first feature film, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, I thought I got that right, that'd be embarrassing. But I mean, what did he bring to the table? Because he's done, I think he's worked with Peter before, but uh, for his first movie, I mean, how is it working with, with him on his debut? Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, he. he he had very, very clear ideas of what he wanted. Uh, he communicated them, communicated them very well to us, and it helps that he's got a visual effects background, so he knows the process that we go through. Um, he's very interactive with the whole crew. He spent every day in our offices. We spent every day back at his office as well, and it's very collaborative. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's wonderful working with Christian. He's, he's very, very clever, and he knows what he wants. And obviously, well, we spoke to the producer, and she said, you know, obviously a series of books, but it was important to just focus on this one and get this one right. I mean, have you guys, was that important for you guys as well to just focus on this rather than kind of, you know, maybe going into sequels if there was gonna gonna be any at any time? Oh yeah, well, it just doesn't even really <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> whole idea of a, a sequel yeah. doesn't even really come up. You're so <laughs> laser focused on getting yeah. what you're doing out the door. Although I'd love a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That said, I would love to make we'll the sequel. As, we'll yeah, yeah. We'll do as many as they want to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you've been involved with some big movies, obviously Bond over the years. How did this one compare? Because it's such a huge, huge scope of a movie. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's a proper movie. It's, yeah, the Bonds were what they were, but this this appeals to a whole different genre. Yeah, young people, my son's friends. It's modern, it's it's uh, vital, it's political, it's, yeah, it's exciting. And it's Peter Jackson and his team, Fran and all that, and Christian and, yeah. Future how, how exciting was it to work with Peter and all his collaborators? Because they've done so many amazing things over the last 20 years and brought visuals to a new new heights in cinema. It's a great honour to work with Peter down there in New Zealand and to see Weta and to see their um, workshops and see what they do. They're groundbreaking and uh, you know, science. It's where science meets art. Is my character in this? This is it. This is it. In your wildest dreams, did you see this becoming a, 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 a reality? In my, wildest, in my wildest dreams, I did, but not actually in reality. No, I wasn't. I wasn't ever expecting to be here, um, being interviewed. Um, that's very odd. Uh, so yes. 
Uh, I can imagine with, with a writer such as yourself, you're quite precious about your material, and then when Hollywood or someone comes calling, you're kind of hesitant. But I guess when it's someone like Peter Jackson, there's a lot of trust well, there straight away. If, he, if he'd come after it while I was writing it, I would have thought, oh, I'm not sure about that. What's he going to do with it? But it's kind of 20 years on now, so um, I can afford to go. I've got loads of other things I've been doing, so I can afford to go, no, this is fine. Let's let him take these ideas and take them to pieces and put them back together and see what comes out. Um, <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's such great. a huge, a huge movie. I mean, when you... Obviously, I can imagine you went to the set, but when you saw the movie itself and saw some of the visuals, I mean, you must have been delighted with what they'd put on film. Yeah, I haven't actually seen the whole thing yet. This is going to be my first look at it. But, uh, you know, from what I've seen of the trailer and the concept art and things, yeah, it's, it's extraordinary. And you've got, I mean, there's the best of the best with this. I mean, Weta and obviously Peter and Fran and Philippo yes, have done yes. these amazing things. I mean, how how happy did that make you that so many people with so many great talents had, uh, had um, come well, on board? Yeah, of course, and I mean, the cast as well are, f are fantastic. And, and Christian, the director, is um, you know, he, he's got this, it's his first feature film, but he's got this terrific pedigree from working on all of the all, all of Peter's movies before. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see a team like that getting to grips with my stuff. <laughs> uh, are you ready for this to kind of take off? I mean, this could be obviously Lord of the Rings and things like Harry Potter coming to franchises. I mean, are you prepared for, for that? Do you think it's going to spawn into that? Are you hopeful? It would be good if it did. There's four books in the series and I kind of like to see that my favourite stuff is in the later ones, so yeah. I'd like to see that. Yeah. yeah. Let's hope so. <laughs> Listen, thanks so much for your time. Absolute Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Why is this the kind of film that should be experienced on the biggest screen you can find? Because it's the biggest film that's ever been. Yeah. I know, but it's, it's, uh, it's visually unique. It's visually unique, and the more real estate on the screen that you have to experience that, the happier I think you'll be as an audience member. I feel like we're all in a trench or something. I know, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Lisa. I think I've got much time to your rush out. Okay. What? What, was your, what was it like your character? What was it like playing your character for this film? It was really lovely. He kind of walked into my head pretty early on, you know, almost fully formed, and then I had to kind of tweak him and tune him. Sorry, Scott. I had to tweak him and tune him here and there. But um, his voice was very, um, it was pretty clear in my head from the get-go, so I felt very comfortable playing him, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!